I have a lot of love for Joaquin Phoenix. Obviously, I've made like 200 movies with him. Part of what makes him magnificent, that sensitivity and the intelligence that I love when I talk to him, he brings it with him in the work. That struggle against the darker side is abundantly clear on the screen. I've talked about him comparing him to Montgomery Clift, who was another actor I really loved, who always seemed to be tormented, and Marlon Brando, of course. But I do think he's in their class. I think he is capable of just the most vivid depiction of our, our internal conflict. So you think there's goodness in everybody, but there isn't. So you go, and you forget about me, and you forget about this place, and you forget about those things that I made you do! Because I took everything from you, and I gave you nothing! Nothing! In Shakespeare's time, he, he had his actors give soliloquies, you know, where they would express directly a tormented state of soul. To be or not to be, that's a very direct expression. And in the cinema, we really don't have that advantage. You can't have an actor sort of turn and give a soliloquy. It would probably feel awfully uh, theatrical. What we do have in the cinema is we have the close-up, and we have the fact that no words can sometimes impart the same impact. If the actor is thinking it, somehow it shows on the screen, and he's thinking, and we can see it. I respond very well to actors who, when they think, and I can see what they're thinking without a word. I mean, that's a very powerful weapon in the, t in the, you know, in the toolbox. A lot of the time directing, uh, as a consequence, when you work with great actors, the directing is an overrated idea. You cast it. And I almost never try to give direction uh, before the first take. Part of what is magical about great actors that they, that they surprise you and they make a choice that doesn't seem obvious but totally organic at the same time. And that's uh, an astonishing and beautiful feeling. Don't go. I love you. I do. I always try to shoot take one without giving any specific direction at all. And a lot of times that's what winds up in the movie. And then uh, after take one, of course, then I start to shape it a little bit if I see things I don't like or if I see things that he or she does that I love, I can try and build on them. Uh, although you can never tell an actor when you like something. It's the most frustrating aspect of the job. You tell the actor, oh, that, that, that bit where you did that and that. They go, oh, thank you, and then the take after, it's never the same, it's never as good, because they're always making something of it, you know. So, unfortunately, you have to kind of uh, obsess over the negative aspects. In this next take, try not to, or uh, in this take, if you could, try to, you know. And, so, uh, and I, I like to simply try to inform the actor of the context of the scene, uh, because the actor sometimes doesn't have the whole thing in his mind or her mind, how could they? Um, but I always find it interesting, I remember coming to the set one day and Mark Wahlberg was reading the scene before the one that he was going to be in. I said, oh, you're reading that scene? He said, oh, yeah, i got to remind myself where, you know, where we are in the story, Jim. I'm sure that was very, a very smart thing that he did, you know, you don't see actors doing that a lot. And that's an important thing, so you, you keep that in mind for the actor. And you also try to remind the actor not to play a role, but to reveal part of him or herself. Because that's the way something beautiful will come, I think. <laughs> <laughs>